Uh, my name is Mahati Chamarti. I work for Intel as a cloud software engineer with the Intel Open Source Technology Center. Uh, I used to contribute to OpenStack object storage known as Swift, and I currently uh, contribute to Ceph Block Storage. Today's talk is going to be about uh, Ceph Block Storage. We'll have uh, uh, some details about the RBD images uh, and some details into RBD features like striping, snapshots, and cloning. And uh, finally, how Ceph integrates with in our virtualized setup. Ceph is a software design, a defined distributed storage, uh, and all the components scale horizontally. There's no single point of failure, and uh, it delivers object block and file storage in one unified system. Radis Block Device is a software that facilitates the storage of block-based data in the Ceph distributed storage. With that, uh, we go into the RBD images. RBD images are thin provision resizable images. Uh, they store data by striping them across uh, multiple OSDs in a Ceph cluster. And it offers two uh, libraries. One is the user space library uh, known as libRBD. Uh, and it's typically used in virtual machines. And the other one is the kernel module, which is uh, used in container and bare metal environments. Here's how a flow of uh, RBD image read write request call looks like. So this is a little simplified, but uh, on a high level, this is what it looks like. So the call goes to the libRBD library, and uh, it, it considers the stripe count and the stripe units and the extents, calculates the extents, and creates the object request, and sends them across to the libRadius library, where it creates a uh, data structure called as op, which, which holds data like object ID, object location, uh, length, and any uh, asynchronous completion calls uh, within that. And that is passed on to the objective module, where it, it creates a connection with the OSD, it sets the priority, and uh, it also uh, calculates the OSD map, like the object map, I'm sorry. And it sends all of this data to the OSD via the async messenger. And uh, we get the response back from the OSD, and, uh, and also the, the asynchronous callbacks are executed uh, currently using the finisher queue. By default, Ceph will enable uh, striping and layering for you. But here are uh, some of the other features uh, that make a difference. So layering will enable a client to use a cloning feature. And uh, exclusive lock will, will let a client uh, obtain a lock. It, it, it makes the client require uh, to obtain a lock before writing to an object. And object map, so since uh, Ceph RBD uh, block devices are thin provision, which means it actually it only stores data that uh, actually exists. Uh, so uh, object map will actually have the, data, the uh, knowledge of where the data actually resides. And it speeds up, uh, with this knowledge, it speeds up the I.O. operations and uh, other operations like exporting and importing RBD images. FastDiff is another property of object map, wherein uh, it helps generate like diffs between snapshots and the actual disk usage of snapshots. Uh, for instance, if you want to run the uh, Ceph uh, disk usage command, uh, with fastdiff enabled, uh, it's, it's, it, I mean, without fastdiff enabled, it has to actually query every OSD to, and to get that data. But with fastdiff, it, 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 it uh, uses the object map and gets that data. Um, and deep flatten is, uh, it actually resolves the issue with the uh, snapshots that are taken from a clone image uh, that was flattened, flattened uh, after the snapshots were taken. So we will uh, like. Uh, a bunch of these features are actually touched upon later on with better context, but for now, uh, uh, this is what it is. RBD has two image formats. Uh, format one is the original format. It, uh, it is now deprecated, but it's still understood by libRBD and the kernel module. And uh, RBD provides uh, replication via uh, mirroring feature. It, uh, it can be enabled per pool where all the images within the pool uh, 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 will have this feature or per individual image. And it requires, uh, it, to achieve the crash consistent uh, replication, 
it requires the join link feature it makes use of join link feature so it's uh, you should enable that uh, in order to avail this uh, this feature and which in turn depends on the exclusive log feature uh, so mirroring can uh, is actually achieved by the rbd mirror daemon and there can be two kinds of replication uh, one way or two way one way is where uh, the daemon is running on one of the clusters and it's uh, the syncing the asynchronous mirroring is happening from the other one and in two way it needs to be run on both the clusters uh, so that they uh, all the images are uh, are uh, mirrored across it has its own uh, in memory libabd cache uh, there are other kinds of caching work that's that is in progress like uh, read only cache and replicated write log cache which which uses persistent device to store the caching data these are uh, these are upstream but these these are still under review and these are all still uh, a bit work in progress when you create an rbd image it uh, it creates a bunch of objects and when you issue a rados command on the rbd pool it uh, it shows a bunch of those like uh, here rbd data holds the uh, raw data image and the uh, the rbd id is the unique id uh, for image and uh, the fragment is uh, based on the offset of the image and rbd directory holds uh, information of all the images within the pool and the uh, the id here is uh, locatable using name and vice versa uh, rbd header actually holds the uh, per image metadata with it uh, so and hence it's associated with the uh, id per image every object map uh, holds where the uh, knows uh, the knowledge of where the actually uh, where the data is where data resides in the cluster and if an image has cloned uh, cloned images then that kind of data is stored in uh, something called as rbd children which is not here in uh, kernel module rbd map command sets up uh, uh, lots of things mostly everything uh, so it reads the config file from the uh, default uh, default config uh, file place and it communicates to the kernel module using the using the linux bus interface uh, the recent module supports layering striping and uh, exclusive lock features it does not have any specialized cache but uh, it takes advantage of the linux page cache more details about these features so uh, it stripes data across the osds and uh, and over the ceph cluster which is very similar to raid 0 it offers the same throughput as uh, raid 0 and uh, while the objects themselves are not striped uh, but because the objects get mapped to different placement groups and uh, placement groups further get mapped to different osds each of these writes occur in parallel and uh, which gives a significant write performance uh, this is also independent to object replicas because crush replicates objects and hence the uh, stripe stripes automatically get replicated in a simple stripe uh, we would stripe like one object and then move on to the other one but if the images gets larger uh, you would want to stripe like to gain performance uh, across the objects uh within an object set uh, so what's happening here is it's striping uh for an stripe count of 4 which means it's striping across four objects before looping back to the original object until it uh it reaches the uh size of the original object so uh and we can have multiple object sets like that so this will uh this will result in a better performance for uh, larger size images usually a write to a single disk would be limited by a head movement and bandwidth of that one device but uh, by spreading that write across these multiple objects it can reduce the number of seeks per drive and combine the throughput of multiple drives and like it can achieve a faster uh, write performance default size is uh, currently are uh, 4 mb uh, for object size and stripe size the and hence the stripe count is 1 uh the object size is required to be at least large enough as large as stripe unit or uh, a multiple of stripe unit in order to accommodate a lot of these stripe units within uh, stripes within an object 
you can decrease the object size uh, in order to, uh, I mean, what it results in if you decrease the object size is that it, uh, it balloons the number of objects in the cluster, but uh, it will also result in copying less data during op operations like uh, snapshotting and uh, copy and write operations. Snapshots are a read-only copy of the state of an image at a particular point in time. They offer uh, snapshot layering, and the supported uh, operations on it are creating uh, listing and rollback and delete and purge. Um, rollback, for instance, uh, can roll back an image uh, to a snapshot. Uh, and in such a case, uh, the image would be overwritten by the snapshot, and the amount of time it takes would be directly parallel to the size of the image. But that can be also be achieved by, uh, say, taking a clone of a snapshot of the image. And it, the result will be similar, but it will achieve uh, in, I mean, that's achieved in faster time. Also, when uh, a delete happens, it does not free up the disk space immediately, because uh, the delete happens uh, asynchronously. Layering here refers to copy on write clones. Uh, and that's supported. Only format two images supported. Um, so the process to do a clone is to uh, create an RBD image, create a snapshot out of it, protect the snapshot, and, and create a clone out of it. So the reason to protect is uh, a clone image will actually hold a reference to the, uh, will actually refer to the parent image. In, in this case, it's a snapshot. So in order to, Pre prevent any deletion uh, of the snapshot, uh, we require that it's protected. A clone image is very similar to an RBD image, and a lot of these operations, uh, what you can do on an RBD image, you can also do on a clone image. Like you can read, write, uh, take a snapshot of it, or you can resize it. And uh, the way cloning works is uh, for a write, it checks for object existence, and if, uh, if it doesn't exist, it does a copy up uh, operation over the snapshot, and it copies the uh, the data along with the original write that got in. So the uh, the clone image has a reference to parent snapshot, which includes details like the pool ID, image ID, and snapshot ID. Uh, having a reference to the pool ID indicates that you can uh, clone uh, images from clone snapshot from one pool to into an image into another pool. So fla uh, fla you need to flatten the clone before uh, you want to delete a snapshot. Uh, since earlier, it was protected. Uh, we need to unprotect it uh, in order to delete it. And also, uh, uh, in order to unprotect it, we need to flatten the associated clone image. What that means is that uh, we need to remove all the references. Uh, 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 from the parent image, which means which involves copying all the data from the parent image and uh, and uh, unprotecting it, and now the snapshot can be deleted. So, but this might result in a case where uh, after flattening a cloned image, the snapshots that are obtained before flattening an image might not have reference to the uh, to the data in the current cloned image. So, deep flatten actually resolves this issue, and uh, all the snapshots that are created before cl uh, flattening a clone image will still have reference to uh, the current clone image. Uh, some of the use cases of layering would be uh, to use it as a, uh, like create a master image and make a snapshot of, out of it and use that as a template. An extended uh, use case would be to clone that snapshot and uh, make some changes to it and create another snapshot of the clone and uh, use that as a template. You can also create a pool of uh, master images and snapshots of it. And you can give uh, a client like just a read-only access to it so that they can use that. Uh, and it can also be used in image uh, migration from one pool to another and image recovery. So earlier we were talking about uh, exclusive lock feature, which, uh, which is used in uh, scenarios where <laughs> Multiple clients, mounted clients, are uh, obtaining to are trying to write to the same object, which will result in a write conflict. So, exclusive lock uh, will help prevent that. But we also need to synchronize uh, those clients. 
So a watch notify mechanism will help do that. Uh, multiple clients can actually register uh, a watch on a, uh, an interest on an object. So and uh, they will receive the notifies. By receiving notifies, what it means is that uh, it tends to communicate to all the uh, registered clients and it waits until each of the clients acknowledges or until it's timed out. So this way, uh, all these clients are, are, uh, are communicating to each other, uh, am amongst each other. And finally, how uh, Ceph works with or integrates with the virtualization tools. <laughs> it provides block device, like, uh, devices to cloud solutions like OpenStack and uh, CloudStack. So LibWord is uh, acts as an abstraction layer between a hypervisor and the software applications that use them. Um, so one of the Ceph uh, supports QMU and K KVM, and one of the most common LibWord use cases uh, will involve providing Ceph block devices to cloud solutions, like where the cloud solution uses uh, LibWord and LibWord interacts with QMU, which can interact with the LibRBD. So here are a bunch of steps to how, so how do you make a, uh, a virtual machine that's uh, uh, to communicate with the Ceph cluster. Uh, so it assumes that you already have, uh, you have created a, a pool called as libword pool, and uh, now you're trying to create an image with the uh, QMU image command. Uh, it can also be created using the RBD uh, command line, but uh, this is just to ensure that QMU is working properly. So uh, verify that the image is created by uh, issuing that uh, the RBD command on the pool. And create a virtual machine, uh, which those are the steps that are skipped here, is to create a virtual machine uh, using the word, uh, the word manager and import the OS. Now stop the VM and uh, edit it with the uh, search command. So you'll already see an entry for the devices. Uh, replace this source file with the uh, with the OS image, uh, since that's the use case here. Now add, add Ceph RBD image as a disk entry. Uh, and replace the values for the pool and image with the, and also the monitor host name. Uh, it can have multiple entries as well. Uh, the optional bus is how the, uh, what it uses for the disk device emulation. So it can be SCSI or SATA, uh, here it is Vertigo. So and uh, store this uh, Ceph authentication using the libword secret mechanism. That is, just create a secret.xml file. Uh, here we assume that there's already a Ceph user called as client.libword. So uh, create a secret, define that, and which generates a unique ID. Uh, get the uh, client.libword user key with the Ceph auth command and uh, append that to a dot .key file. Now uh, feed that back into the to, uh, set secret set value and then feed that value to the uh, XML, the VM, uh, the VM XML. So I think uh, that's, uh, that's, those are the steps and it's pretty well documented actually. And, uh, and also there can be a cross reference to the libword documentation where it's much more detailed and it uh, gives you details about why, uh, what each option does and what, uh, what it does on creating a secret file and et cetera. So finally, after all the setup, verify that Ceph is working by running the Ceph health command and check that the virtual machine is running and also ensure that there's a communication between Ceph and the uh, virtual machine. So that's all I have uh, for today. Any questions? Okay. If anybody has questions, put up the lights. Hi. Thank you.